tonight on KSL Outdoors. We're pretty excited. It's going to be a good hunt. 60,000 hunters are afield making memories with their families on this year's general season deer hunt. We're live at deer camp. We'll have an update on the hunt and some tall tales around the campfire. Next up on KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Welcome to a special edition of KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. We're live at Deer Camp down in southern Utah. You know, for 60,000 hunters, this is a tradition, or at least it has been. You know, in the past when I was younger, we went out a few times, but my family didn't do a ton. So I came down here to southern Utah. I call my southern Utah family, the Martins, the Myers, some of the crazy guys, and <laughs> Dave right here. And of course, Miranda, you had to be about this age when I first started coming down yeah. here to hunt, I don't know, 15, 12, 15 years ago. Yeah, pretty close. I was little. Yeah, big tradition came. for your family, isn't it? Yeah, it goes back to my mom's family. They all hunted in this area, my dad's family, and it just has gotten bigger the more we get older and add to our family and it's getting better now it's it. you kids that have to keep this this tradition going yeah. right yeah yeah we're learning still <laughs> lots but it's fun it's been fun to learn from my dad you know yeah. especially in memories making memories and you know like every trail we go down it's a memory and we talk about it and remember that one time we were here or my dad shares stories when he was with his dad so it's it's been awesome yeah making memories of what it's all about we had 10 tags in camp and old Madison, my daughter, was on the gun. Madison, you ready to go? Yeah. What are you doing? Your makeup? Yeah, I'm there's, going on TV. There's no makeup on there's no makeup on the deer hunt. I think there is. <laughs> we awoke to a crisp 25 degrees, but the skies are clear and there's no wind. Let's go, it's getting light. It's freezing cold. Oh. It's cold outside. You don't want to get out of the truck, do you? Not really. We'll do Not a right road now. Hunt this morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> 10 minutes out of camp, right at shooting time, we spot this buck right off the road. And can I shoot him? Yes. The buck is with a bunch of dough. Where's the safety? But never give Madison a clean shot. I was afraid because I couldn't tell which one was him, so I didn't want to shoot a doe. Yeah, so you made the right decision. Yeah. If you can't tell what it is and you're not sure about your target, you don't shoot. Nope. All right. Let's go find another. Okay. For me, passing the tradition of the hunt to my daughter and new son-in-law, Tavish, is what I look forward to most. And many of the other older hunters afield are feeling the same way. I mean, we've been coming out here for, well, ever since these kids were born, so. Yeah. Passing it on? Yes, I think so. I think the grandkids are enjoying it, too. You know, it's one of those things that we need to keep alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Getting out and about and then the uh, art of hunting. and 218 yards, <laughs> nice. one shot. Ashley Christensen had success this morning. The three youngest boys were even along for the ride. Sometimes it can be a little stressful <laughs> with younger kids. <laughs> they have a harder time staying, staying still and being quiet, but it's fun for them to get to experience it and have fun and be here with their family and see stuff like this. He's got some other deer with him. Back with Madison, and we've spotted a really nice buck, but it's a half mile away. We're gonna go find the deer. There's a pretty big buck straight ahead of us by those oaks. Okay. So. He's a pretty good one. Yeah, he's pretty good. I'd like to get him. We get out to put a stock on the buck, but the herd gives us the slip. But not a half hour later, another buck pops out right below us. I have it. Shoot him. <laughs> that was easy. There's like they snuck up on us. There's just two all of a sudden. You're done. I think he's only a spike. That was like, easy. Just a tall spike. Is he? he probably is. <laughs> he had a, he had antlers. Yeah. They're thick though. It looks like they're almost in the velvet still. But... He's probably like a little spike, which is hilarious. But I got one. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> and I guess we know who puts the meat on the table in the Nelson family. <laughs> <laughs> This is something you did with your family, though. Yeah. And it's something Madison did with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's little Bambi. So it's kind of a family tradition. Is yeah, this we'll something you guys keep it on? Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Pass down to my for grandchildren. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> <It's better. laughs>
Look at that cute little face. Two month old Colin Jones on his very first deer hunt. Look at this too. We've got four newlyweds. We got the old newlyweds. I won't ask how many this has been. And we got the young newlyweds. We got Corbin, Kelsey, Nessa, and all right, guys, and, and Tavish. We, we have got, got to decide who's going to have the first grandchild and keep this going. What? Well, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> we got a little bet here. Dora's going to give me dinner in Salt Lake if uh, these two come through first, and I owe him dinner if those two come first. So great time down here in Southern Utah. We hope you get out with your family and friends. Hey, we'll have more here from Deer Camp in a moment, but first, down a different trail on tonight's climate quiz question. Deer numbers are down across the West and the DWR has made changes to protect the herds and to help manage hunters. The state used to have a five region approach for the deer hunt and then switched to a unit based approach in 2012. Our climate quiz question tonight is, how many general season deer units do we have in Utah? And once you know the number of general deer units, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answer, and while you're at it, give us a like. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner, set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. And our answer to last week's question, which was, what year did the DWR reintroduce bison to the book cliffs from the Henry Mountains? The answer? It was back in January 2009 when 31 bison were captured on the Henrys, transferred to Antelope Island, tested, found to be disease-free, and then released onto the book cliffs. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, will be right back to Deer Camp. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, Intermountain Wind and Solar, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors here, live at Deer Camp. Hey, it was the Myers kids right here that came and uh, saved us when we uh, shot Madison's deer, and uh, my truck got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tavish, we saw quite a few deer today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We saw about like 30 doe at least, and another seven bucks out there, so it was a pretty successful day, I'd say. Yeah. A lot of fun, a lot, oh, of yeah. fun. a lot of fun. You know, down here in southern Utah, the herds are still doing pretty good. In fact, the division is saying we got about 80, 90,000 more deer across the state. But if you were hunting in northern Utah, say Cache County, it was a little bit of a different story. Uh, we're, we're pretty excited. It's going to be a good hunt. Last year was the most successful deer hunt in 10 years. In 2016, a total of 80,000 hunters took a combined 32,000 bucks during the general archery, muzzleloader, and rifle hunts. This year, your success will depend on where you're hunting in the state. We had a more severe winter in some of the northern portions of the state. We knew in advance that some of these populations lost a lot of their fawns. You won't see as many yearling bucks in some of the northern units. However, when you look at these populations, um, we still have 80,000 more deer than we had five years ago. And so you're going to see a lot more mature bucks on the landscape, and, and that'll be primarily what's harvested in some of the northern units. The southern portion of the state didn't experience the same severe winter that the northern portion did, so they will see a lot of younger bucks along with a lot of mature bucks. According to Covey, Utah has seen a bump in deer population numbers over much of the state the last five years because of work done by the DWR and its partners and because we have had five mild winters across much of Utah. Utah is doing a lot. We have worked really, really hard. We've done over 100,000 acres of restoration a year now for the last 10 years. Another key factor is we've had some really mild winters. I mean, this, this last winter, the, the previous five winters were pretty mild. And so you, you get high fawn survival and that accompanied with high adult survival allows us to grow these populations. And that's not the same for other western states that haven't done the work. So they haven't seen the increases that Utah has. Covey says the DWR's understanding of the deer population in Utah is improving, in part because of a new collar study they implemented two years ago that studies fawn and doe survival across the state. Now we have GPS collars, so we can tell how these animals use the landscape, what they prefer at what times of year, what their key migration corridors are, what area they need. And we can also, within just looking at a screen, look at what survival is. So the general season deer hunt's great, but remember there's a lot of hunters on the landscape. Be safe, be smart, wear hunter orange. Second of all, we're always trying to monitor these populations for disease and other things. We set up check stations around the state where we look at disease, um, we look at fat, and that allows us to understand where populations are going into winter. So please, if you harvest an animal, please stop by 
one of the check stations, uh, spend some time, talk to the biologists. It's important data for us to collect. It's important for us to, to interact and understand how the hunt was for you. Back here live around the fire and everybody's trying to keep warm. Getting pretty cold out here. The kids are all, well, you're not even bundled up. Look at that. Hey, right now it's great to be out on the hunt, but there's some good fishing. Is there any good fishing around here? Beaver Mountain. Beaver Mountain. We have we have seven different lakes on the mountain, yeah. and all of them are good fishing. Nice. Um, Let's go fishing tomorrow. I'm tagged yeah, out. Y'all She's try done. it out sometime. <laughs> okay. Hey, some great fishing going on right now up at Strawberry. I've heard starvation's not doing too bad. Let's turn it over to the guys back in Salt Lake at Fish Tech for tonight's Fish Tech Fish Report. I get asked all the time, what do I use to catch big trout at Strawberry? So I cut all my lures off the rods that I took up last weekend, and I'm going to show you what I use. Hi, I'm Dan Smith from Fish Tech Outfitters. Top water, everybody thinks top water's for bass. A whopper plopper, that is exciting. The tail spins and cuts the top of the water and makes a big ruckus. A Mikey Jr., Mikey Jr. wake, the wake bait. And it makes a clicking noise and it attracts the fish. Jerk baits, once they go on down a little bit deeper, they won't come up and hit that top water. Then I'll use a jerk bait. Pointer 78, this happens to be a ghost rainbow. Lipless crankbaits. Everybody thinks lipless crankbaits are for bass. Oh no. Rainbows and cutthroats both will eat lipless crankbaits. When I really want a big fish, I'll throw the swim bait. Now you guys that are fly fishermen, now's the time to get up there and do a mouth pattern on top. They'll come up and just blow up on that mouth pattern. This is a new one I'm thinking about trying and it's a rat. I think they'll eat that rat. It's a wake bait, it stays on top. If you have any questions on how to catch fish on the top or how to catch big fish at Strawberry, come on down and we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. We've moved to our Camp Chef kitchen here. And if my kids know when they come cooking with me, they get hot dogs and hamburgers. But not this week. We brought Bacon Bill Johnson from the International Dutch Oven Society. And, and uh, Bill, you went all out. What do we got? Well, there's nothing wrong with hot dogs and hamburgers, but we've got uh, Bacon Bill's trail stew today. Nice. And What's in it? Well, we got uh, uh, potatoes, we got carrots, we got uh, red bell peppers, onions. Uh, we call it a whatever stew, you know, it's whatever you have in your fridge, whatever you have left over, whatever's in the fridge that doesn't have mold on it. Yeah. So. <laughs> what else you got here? This is beautiful. Okay. And this, I know this is, I'd already taste tested this. Okay, this is a pineapple uh, cake we've got here, and uh, it's got pineapple on the bottom. Uh, we've got cinnamon. People have been asking, what's that smell? Well, we have cinnamon, brown sugar in here. Yeah. And then we move on, we've got our rolls. And, and cooking in, when you're outdoors doesn't need to be difficult now, does no, it? No, it doesn't. So uh, this is real simple. Uh, you know, nice thing about it is be prepared ahead of time. Prep a lot of your vegetables, uh, parboil some of your potatoes, things like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with popping cans too. A lot of your meats you can get out of cans. Uh, your chicken, different things like this. But uh, uh, you just up your imagination. Uh, you know, and uh, we have a lot of fun when we cook with Dutch oven. Uh, we get our kids in. That's the main thing. We want to bring our kids out here. Yep. We got lots of kids. Come grab some, guys. Want to roll here? But and even your heat source, you can use so many different things from your Camp Chef stove to briskets, well, or to briquettes, variety, I mean. A variety of heat sources, uh, whether it be propane, butane, natural gas, uh, your campfire, your fireplace. And uh, of course, we really. Uh, stress the importance of using cast iron. I like cast iron because it heats up slow, but it cools down slow, so you get a nice even uh, heating. And we've got some great ovens here from Camp Chef. We've got our kitchen variety, we've got our camp variety with the legs, uh, and uh, the great thing about it, some of them are like self-basting lids where yeah. moisture will collect and it'll dirt back on there. But uh, we also, uh, encourage people to get into Dutch oven cooking. Uh, we have a lot of contests with the International Dutch Oven Society. We have the World uh, uh, Dutch Oven uh, Cook-Off. So I uh, want to encourage you to come out and visit, see what's cooking going on today. Yeah, what's the website real quick? Okay, www.idos.org. Nice. We're a nonprofit group. Nice. 
get out and support the guys. They do a great job. They've done a great job for years and a lot of stories with them. Hey, we got a lot of hungry crew here lining up. Mel's got chicken on over there, right, Mel? Chicken, chicken and potatoes. A lot of hungry people. <laughs> hey, let's go down a different trail now on tonight's Utah Field Guide. It's getting cold outside. It's time to layer up. Hi, I'm Jed Nelson with King's Camel, and I'm going to run through our XKG layering system to keep you warm this fall. Layer one is our base layers. We have merino wool and or polyester quarter zip tee next to skin. From there, we go to our layer two, which is our ridge pant, full mountaineering cut, antimicrobial, DWR treated, topped with our uh, quarter zip fleece piece for that uh, chill morning, but not too cold yet, September, October, early October time frame. Layer three is our uh, transition jacket. It stuffs in its left hand pocket and creates that uh, insulated layer that you need when it gets colder in the fall. From there we go to our layer four, which is our tri-laminate lone peak jacket that'll block the wind and highly water resistant as well. The hood is totally completely removable if you don't want it, which will layer over the top of our loft piece to create that down parka. Layer five is our rainwear. It's 100% waterproof tape seamed and it's as quiet as we can make rainwear. We've made it a two-way zipper leg all the way through so you can put it over your boots in the field. The jacket is long tail cut to, to make sure you're covered up throughout the rest of the items you, you have on for that day. And don't forget your accessories, waterproof glove and insulated, neck gaiters, beanies, leg gaiters to keep you comfortable in the field and successful this fall. Come see us down at King's Camel in Linden or one of our retail outlets across the Wasatch Front. Dutch oven potatoes and chicken. I'm hungry. When we eating? It's ready. <laughs> we got to get the crew Let's over eat. here. Yeah. I agree. Hey, I warm the belly on a cold day like today down here in southern Utah. It's a bit chilly out on the mountain. Let's check that recreation forecast for your next outdoor adventure by turning over the guys and gals back in the weather department. Look at that right there. Proud moment for a dad and uh, with my daughter, my son-in-law, Tavish. Been married, uh, what, a year is all? Almost a year in yeah. December. We got to get him a buck. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be in this family. He needs to hunt a little hard. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have plans. Hey, don't forget when you're with your family, your friends, your kids, and they get a get a first buck, although that was her second buck, make sure to take lots of pictures. Submit them to our snapshot contest. You might win our big prize from Cam Chef. Now the best of the week as we turn it over to you for our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with a reminder that some of the biggest bucks and bulls can be found right at camp. Mike took his camper up onto the mountain, set it up, and set up a trail camera for security while they were away. Instead of a thief, his camera caught this nice bull taking a stroll around camp. Mike says next year they'll enjoy a hot breakfast in a warm trailer and wait for this guy to come back. After several days of hunting, it was looking pretty bleak for Jordan Humphreys, but Jordan's luck turned around in part because of his trusted grandpa's gun that always shoots true. Jordan filled the freezer with this fine 4x6. The little Ford family was out on this year's spike hunt when young Zeke spotted his first ever elk shed right from the truck. Jeremy says they didn't get a spike this year, but this shed was the next best thing. Our runner-up tonight is pretty funny. Lance was out goose hunting with some friends and family, and while everyone had a great time, Brad Griffith was the only one to shoot a goose. In fact, Brad limited out while the rest of the group got nothing. By the looks of the amount of shells shot that day, I'm sure it wasn't for a lack of effort. But our winner tonight was able to help his great uncle take his last bull. Matt's Uncle Dale drew a Southwest Desert muzzleloader bull tag. At 79 years old, Uncle Dale admitted that this might be his last hunt of a lifetime. With limited mobility on such a tough unit, they thought they were in for a long hunt. But on the opening morning, Matt was able to sweet talk this bull from 500 yards to 50. And old Uncle Dale made a fantastic shot. Matt says for as long as he lives, he'll never forget moments like this. A cool story, Matt, even better photos. And now you lay claim to our big prize from Camp Chef for having the Snapshot of the Week. Remember, submit your pictures or video plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins the new Stryker Multi-Fuel Backpacking Stove that can be fueled by propane or butane. Plus, 
The winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. Build your outdoor kitchen with Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Hey, I don't lie, man. Look at the lineup to get Mel's food and to get Bill's food. Yeah, long line. Look at my line. And look, this is why. <laughs> look at the burger. <laughs> I don't cook so great. I'm not the best cook. We better throw that one to the dogs. Boy, some great memories had here around the campfire up in the hills and uh, just having a good time with my daughter, my new son-in-law, and uh, getting her another buck. It's, it's, this is what the deer hunt is all about. You know, my dad's been gone for a couple years now, and uh, it's times like this I really miss him, and times like this that I really want to make sure that my family gets out and does the same thing. So, Bill, can't say enough uh, coming down and helping us out. Right, you cooked all you. weekend for us. That's right. These yeah. are our everyday cooking pans. We cook at least one, if not three meals in cast iron and Dutch oven. Encourage everybody else to get into it and yeah. have a lot of fun with it. I'm terrible. I need help. We all do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I appreciate you joining us for this special edition of KSL Outdoors here live at Deer Camp. We encourage you every week and we really mean it. Get out with your family and friends and make some memories like deer hunting outdoors. Hey, we'll see you next weekend with a total new show coming from West Yellowstone. Until then, I'm Adam Eagle. Good night.